Good evening, everyone. This is Paul, and I'm joined again by my best friend Andy, who is in charge of the YouTube channel Engineer for God. He just finished uploading his Purgatorio set of Dante's Divine Comedy Trilogy videos, so I hope you'll check that out. For now, we're going to do another joint review, because he always helps me review the older and more obscure Nintendo games. And so today we're going to review... The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening DX for the Game Boy Color and 3DS Virtual Console. So, why do you think a lot of people seem to not give this game enough credit? Um, well, I think on the contrary, a lot of people give it credit. Like, I really? Mean, um, for instance, the um that guy Jeremiah's son who composed that whole like oh yeah that was really re cool. uh remake of like orchestral version of of all the songs from the game. He said it was his favorite Zelda game of all time. Why do you think that game is so revered by the people that do like it? Well, for one, it's a it's different from all the other Zelda games. Like it's um it's just it's different and it's and it's a cool kind of different. Yeah, cuz there's no Zelda, there's no well, Zelda's mentioned, and there's also no Triforce and no Ganon. Link awakens from a shipwreck, which I read Hyrule Historia, and they said that he was on his way back from his journey during the Oracle Games, and that's when the, the ship sunk, and he la landed himself on this mysterious place called Koholint Island, which is where Marin from the Hyrule Warriors games comes in, in her pixelated glory. <laughs> so, um, what would you have to say to the audience about like the overall feel of the game? Like, How does it differ from the 3D Zeldas? Well, so I mean, first of all, it's it's your typical top-down Zelda like in the olden days, and it's uh, typical in that there's like a there's like a part of story, and you have to like do something, and then it'll get to be where you go to the next dungeon. So it's the typical wander around and explore, and then go to a dungeon, get the major item, defeat the boss, and move on yes. kind of formula. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, it doesn't stray too much from the basics of Zelda, even if the story is unorthodox. Yes. So, what about... One thing I really liked when I played the 3DS Virtual Console version was I liked how the map, like, gradually filled in the more you explore, which I don't think any other Zelda game has done that. What did you think of that feature? Wait, um... I'm trying to remember. You're saying it fills in. Map fills in. The map, the map screen, like only the squares that you've already explored are filled in, and then you get more and more the more you explore of the island. Well, you're talking about dungeons, right? No, I'm talking about the the island map. Oh, I guess I must have forgotten about that aspect. Well, I thought that was pretty cool. Huh. One thing I didn't like about the game was it had a very slow pace. Like it seemed like everything was so like slow and boring and maybe that's why i didn't play too much of it like i beat the first dungeon then i was just like oh my gosh do i have to suffer for this it's insufferably slow dialogue but you're a slow reader so that didn't bother you did it no so about the dialogue i've heard a lot of people say that it's some of the most humorous in the entire zelda franchise Would like you agree the, with the that? trading quest is like the trading quest the trading quest is one of the um one of the really hilarious things like like all this like stupid things you have to do like with it like there's one there's one time where you uh you uh trade something with the monkeys and they leave you a stick it's like the monkey stick and then you have to give it to Taran so he can he can get a bees hive down from a tree and the bees chase him away and you're left with the bees hive <laughs> and you it's a really well, don't spoil the whole thing for the no audience. but it's just like uh Silly stuff like that, like the the same kind of uh, trading quests appear in the Oracle games, which it even has the same like music for some of the frantic silly things. But yeah. So what did you think of the dungeon design overall? Was it on par with Zelda standards, or did you find them kind of blah, like I did? Yeah, for the most part, the dungeons of that game are kind of blah because they're um like. A lot of them look more or less the same. I mean, there are dif definitely differences, but um, the, dun the dungeon like design pretty much is kind of blah. Of course, you do need the major item usually to yeah. get through it. Um, one thing I do say in favor of it, though, is that each dungeon has a, has a different music. Which I wasn't too thrilled at, because while it was a cool concept at the time, especially after coming from A Link to the Past, which only had, like, what, four dungeon musics? Like mm -hmm. They had Hyrule Castle, Light World Dungeon, Dark World Dungeon. Yeah. Um, 
I found the music to be kind of too tinny for my tastes. Maybe I'm just spoiled yeah, by well, Jeremiah's I mean, son. It is like, yeah, I mean, the Jeremiah's son, like, the way he does the dungeons, he makes them sound super grand. Like, um, oh, yeah, like I mean, Eagle Tower. He, well, he takes, um, he takes like, uh, Angler's Tunnel, uh, which in the game, all Angler's Tunnel is, is a remake of the cave tune with higher notes. <laughs> Just your typical, do 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 do, do do, do 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 do. Don't remind me. Then the piece of power that was one of the most boring looping tunes in the whole game. Oh yeah, that tune. Yeah, it gets gets annoying. Yeah, it gets annoying as well. But um, I think what I have to say about the game is that strongest point is the storyline. I would have to agree with you there. So unique, and and I like the whole concept of you getting the instruments the sirens yeah i remember you like basically spoiled the whole ending to me and i was just like whoa this is like the coolest concept ever but just in case you've been living under a rock all these years he and i are not going to be the ones to spoil it so like i said it's on the eShop for like five bucks so if you're one of those people that you're like paul you're reviewing an ancient game boy color game it's like well i played it on the 3ds and one of the cool things i found about the 3ds version was the restore point feature which Remember when you heard about it, you thought that it was so cheap that, like, I got to the big caterpillar that, like, knocks you into a pit. And because I had the restore point, I just, like, yeah, went oh, back oh. to the beginning of the battle and just kept spamming my way to victory yeah. because I didn't want to mm-hmm. go all the way back to him. Yeah. But, oh, um, talk about secrets. Um, the, One of the cool features of that game is that there's, like, codes you can do to make silly things happen. Like, um, I, if you if you make your name Zelda... In the um, the, when you create a file, it'll play the original Zelda theme. Oh wow! And uh, and then also if you try to steal an item from the shop, then the next time you go in the shop, the shopkeeper kills you, and then the next time you open up your file, you're renamed thief. Well, I remember that the guy who wrote the English text, his name was Dan Osen. He was actually a former Nintendo Power writer, so. You can tell they had the big shots working on this game. Mm-hmm. So what about the graphics? Like, I know we're talking about a Game Boy Color game here, mm-hmm. but did it look like it pushed the Game Boy Color's power, or did you feel like it was mostly just a retread of a Game Boy game? Well, I mean, I guess it would have pushed the Game Boy Color's power, and the, the text the text style it uses in that game is actually pretty much unique to that game. Really? Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Um, yeah, because it kind of feels like it's coming out of an ancient notebook. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, but it it's kind of a cool textile. Um, and um, what? It, okay, so because this is the DX version, and obviously neither of us got a chance to get the Game Boy printer or Game Boy camera. Why don't you tell the audience about the really big new thing that they added over the Game Boy version? They added a um, new dungeon known as the Color Dungeon. And what a great name, huh? <laughs> yeah. Is it easy to find, would you say? Or is it one of those, like, if you don't know about it on the internet, you're screwed type of dungeons? Um, it's fairly easy to find as long as you, uh, like, read the right things in the game. It, it'll it lead you to that, but it's well, it's kind of a fun dungeon, I mean. Would you say that it's better than the ma- ma- uh, than the regular dungeons in the main game? No, it's just another dungeon, really. Does it take advantage of, like, being in color? Oh, definitely. I mean, it is the color dungeon. Would you say that it's worth, like, unlike the reward in the Cave of Shadows in Twilight Princess HD, would you say that the reward for beating the dungeon is worth buying the DX version? Um, I wouldn't say so, although I would get the DX version because it's not super ancient. I'm pretty sure you can't. In fact, in fact, I don't even know if you can get the original. I've never played the original. Yeah, so neither have I. I don't think I've even seen it in the stores anymore. I know some places like Gamehead still sell Link's Awakening DX copies, but the original, that's just pushing it. But like I said, it's available on the 3DS for like five bucks, so don't know what you're waiting for from there. Yeah, and if you like the music to hear it like remade, then check out uh, Jeremiah's son's music. Um, he has all of his, his music posted on YouTube, and he has like even like a video videos of the storyline of the game with his music. Mm, very so nice. I, he he did a lot, so he really deserves to. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, I bought his soundtrack and the full version. He even has an abridged version of it as well as the. Mm. So. We might have to see if we can get around the copyright issues and get his album as the cover of this video, but that would be pushing it. 
So, uh, are there any, like, really negative sp spots to the game that might turn people off? Um, I guess just the fact that it's cubic. But, yeah. And also the, um, the, you know, the music is going to sound cubic in the game. Some of it, like, repetitive. And some of it actually hurt my ears because it was so tinny. Mm-hmm. But, um, as far as storyline... Like, that's definitely not a problem. So would you say that it's one of the better Zelda games in the top-down series? Oh, definitely. And um, would you say that it's totally worth the five bucks if they decided to get it on the 3DS? Oh, definitely. It's a classic. Cool. You gotta play it. Alrighty, well, thank you very much, Andy, for joining me on this channel. Um, keep in mind that he usually plays more of the older and obscure games, so... If you want us to review those, please let us know. And make sure to check out his channel. He's Engineer for God. Anyway, thank you so much. Um, Andy, do you have a, an awesome catchphrase to share with the audience before we go? No, I don't usually. Okay, in that case, keep the faith, stay epic, and God bless.